All right, everybody. Welcome. I am trying really hard to get to 1,000 subs. That's definitely like my next goal um, with all of this. So there's a lot of ways that you can engage with the channel and get notified as to when new videos are coming up. Some of those ways are Facebook and Twitter and also Discord. And then if you want to donate because you like the content and want to keep seeing more, there's also PayPal. But that's kind of the idea of getting to a thousand subs. Um, but I just want to thank everybody for watching. And if you are really enjoying this content, be sure to leave a like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and that's pretty much it. So let's get on to today's video. All right, welcome back to Love Sam, which is actually going a lot better than I thought it would. I really like this game so far. Um, we're going to keep on reading the diary because that's how we move on. Uh, what will be remember me as? A friend? A weirdo? A liar? After all, he didn't really know me. Like, really know me. No one did. I had to put on so many masks just to survive high school. The me that B knew was just layers and layers of fabricated image. I could never take them off. I couldn't let anyone see how vulnerable I was. I would have been eaten alive. Worse, B would have left me completely. Even when the fragile layers wore off, I couldn't take them off. So all I did, cover up holes before anyone could peek through. Cover them up. Don't let them see my face. Find the lies. Okay. Okay. Cool. I can hear them. They're like whispering. Where is it? Oh, there it is. Royal. Oh, I'm not going to make it. Right? Do I die? Okay. So I know where two of them are. Right off the bat. I never found the third one. Let's try again. Cover them up, don't let them see my face. Find the lies. Okay. Get up. If I focus on finding the third one. Oh, they're in different places now. No. That's not cool. Or do I have to find them in order? I bet you I have to find them in order. No, they're in different places. Uh, I'm gonna lose again. Ah. Uh. Hmm. All right, I don't want to start it yet.
trying to see if I can... All right, I guess I just keep trying. Okay, so if they're in order. So I gotta get this one first. Man, I wish I could run. gotta be in the bathroom right it's gotta be there it is it's behind the dang door okay oh that's not right dang it come on I'm not gonna make it Liar. Whew. I just made it. Holy crap. Whew. I was returning some of the books I checked out when he came out of nowhere. Hey, anything worth reading? I didn't know the voice was aimed at me, but my heart was somehow already skipping a beat. Brian had to tap me on the shoulder to get my complete attention. Sam, right? I saw you going in and out of the library, he said with a buttery voice. It's not like I've been stalking you or anything. I came here from time to time to get the stupid assignment out of the way so I could focus on my games. He said he couldn't find anything interesting to read since all he could think of were comics he, used, he could use some guidance. My mind was still jumbled up from the ambush. All I remember saying is, how about misery? Stephen King's works are good enough to get you started. Because boys like any story with blood and breaking bones, right? Oh god. I don't recall the rest of the conversation went, but I'm certain he said, see you later at some point. And I said, yeah, see ya. Misery. Real nice, Sam. If Brian didn't know you were a weirdo, he does now. Alright. What I did, I did for B. All of them. Because I loved him. Why couldn't he just understand? Others were nothing but poison. I was the only one he truly cared, but B didn't even appreciate the things I've done for him. Never wanted a drama. I wanted a poem like Life. A tender, subtle love story written only for his eyes. It's totally fine if no one else gets it, as long as B does. I hope B remembers our own little world. Even if he forgets about it, I made him a map so he can find his way back. I think it's a good time to come back now, B. Let's go back to our small world while all, all your favorite places are forever etched in my heart. Go back. Hmm. Oh. Oh. Wait. Okay. So do I need to... Turns out the lake does have a history of having a dead body in it. I know this because I went there. Went there because Brian took me there. What? It happened all so fast. I was going outside the yard reading when Brian appeared out of nowhere again. He said hey and started telling me how he actually enjoyed the book and how he never read the same book twice in his life. Since he was heading out, he offered me to give me a tour of the town. Ten minutes later, we were passing Joe's Diner, home of the world-famous pancakes, says Brian. There was also an arcade across from the diner. Brian hates the place because it's teeming with ten-year-olds. The donut shop was Brian's must-go-to place. Too, unlike the music store, which according to him seriously needs to restock, I found my own POI, a bookstore. It was weird seeing a bookstore and a gym standing side by side, though. At the end of the tour, I finally got to taste that sweet pancake Brian worshipped. Out of the window, I could see the weird gigantic hill that was also visible from my dorm room. Brian revealed that he had a secret base of some kind there. He jokingly said he could take me there when I was when I'm cool enough. After dinner, Brian dropped me off at the bus station and, and drove off to meet up with his friends. I was ex exhausted but hyped up beyond my limits. I can't sleep. How can I when the whole day just feels like a dream? Okay, so I need to go back and find all the hearts? Or... Mark our favorite spots. Pancakes. The library. And then... Aha!
I knew it had something to do with that. And he didn't like the arcade. Donut shop was the must go to. Right? Um, Joe's Diner. Donut shop. Bookstore. Yeah. Yeah, pancakes, bookstore. Oh, it's his favorite spots. I miss Morning Dew Donut Shop. B never shuts up about its donuts. They did taste sweet, just like B's heart. Each bite was another memory to savor. But just like a donut, it has an expiration date. It turned cold and bitter. I miss its warmth. I miss its sweetness. I need it. I need to eat it up. You ate his heart. Didn't you? Didn't you? Alright. It wants me to do something. It's probably... Yeah. It's in the fridge, isn't it? Oh. I miss its warmth. Eat it. Eat the donut. Can I... I miss its warmth. Oh, I can heat it up. Hello? Aww. Oh, hey, the key! that and a red marker okay cool the golems just obliterated the hammerheads today I now know why they say Brian and Kyle are more than buds I would have called them an awesome duo too if only Kyle wasn't an asshole of a douche ass load of a douche I mean the guy has his name tattooed on his arm. Call me old-fashioned, but I think he should go to the hospital and get that ego checked out, because it must be swollen huge. At least he leaves me alone, other than giving me that creepy stare when I pass by. I understand how Stacy keeps hanging out with him, but Brian? They do say we sometimes become friends with those who are at the opposite end, so maybe it's not such a weird thing. For me, the real win was the photos I took of Brian. Watch out for Sam Holt, the rising teenage stalker. Bring the Polaroid camera I bought years ago during my camera geek phase seems like a good idea now. I know I promised myself to stay away from people, stay away from the drama, but when I look at Brian, when he talks to me, it feels like maybe, just maybe, it's okay to have a little drama for myself. I'm not ready to define what this feeling is, but for now, I'm going to label it as looking for a shoulder to cry on, and just shove it under my bed, just like the pictures I took today. Okay. I hated every moment I was not with B. I was helpless. Every day I just wanted to call him, just so we could chat. But I was afraid of what Brian would think of it. It could even hurt his reputation. When I finally worked up the nerve to call, all I could do was listen to him say hello. That was as far as our late night phone call chit chat would go. I hung up wondering if he knew who was on the other end of the line. I remember the strong burning sensation that came every time I called him. That red fiery sensation. Red. 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 No, I, I, I get it, <laughs> but I can't. Red. Red. Oh, I can turn. So fucking red. Red everywhere. Okay, now it wants me to do something. Finish what you started. What? Oh, here we go.
There we go. Oh. <laughs> that was interesting. Oh, wow, they're all over the wall, aren't they? Now, is there something in the bathroom? Oh, here we go. Well, now... Oh, the window's open again. Shut up. Close it. Oh. Oh, there's somebody outside. Now they're gone. Hi! Now I'm in the woods. What the heck? Um. Hello? Brian? Or am I Brian? Sam? I don't have a flashlight. There's some lit up stuff down here. Hello? Sam, meet me at Colton Hill. You know where to find me. Brian. Huh. Somebody was running up on me. Okay. Can I leave now? No. Of course not. Due date for Miss Lasley's book report is right around the corner, and I'm still not finished. Only if I wasn't too disturbed. Normally I wouldn't bother reading a teen romance story, but for some reason I thought, hey, why not? The premise for Ming Mingled itself is pretty generic. Jenny has a huge crush on her childhood friend Michael, but she can't get Michael to think of her as more than just a friend. She reaches a conclusion that it's because of all those girls around him, so she starts making a list of all the basic girls who also have a crush on Michael. What she's planning to do with the list is yet to be revealed. If I can finish reading the book by tomorrow, I'll be able to finish the report with enough time for a revise. P.S. I wonder how Brian is doing with his assignments. Why am I interested? Because he's been asking for my help with some of his work. And I, act and I gladly agreed to. Why would I do that? Because by helping Brian focus on his practices so we can bring trophies to our beloved school, it becomes safe to say I'm taking part in a bigger co cause. Not like I'm doing this for personal reasons, right? I wanted so bad to be close to Brian. So close I can peep into his beautiful head. Okay. So I can just lean into him and tell him my deepest desires. So close that I can whisper, don't leave me, don't go away, don't smile for others. Don't look away, don't look away, don't look away, don't look away. Oh god. Don't look away. Don't look away. Don't look away. Stop it. Don't look away. Oh, now I have to look away, don't I? Oh. Oh. Oh, ho, ho, ho. that was good. All right, Stacy invited everyone to the late post-victory party at her place this Friday. Weird that she told me this at the hallway herself. The sudden act of courtesy was enough to leave me frozen, but to think of it, a self-conscious beauty queen like Stacy would love showing off how tolerant she could be. I'd prefer celebrating quietly in my room, but since the party is practically being held for Brian, I thought it would be sort of rude for me not to be there. He was nothing but nice to me since I met him, so the least I could do is show up. Plus, I could probably witness the face Stacy makes when she sees I actually had the nerve to show up. Maybe, just maybe, I could even piss her off if I managed to strike up a conversation with Brian. And Omega hanging out with an alpha? Kyle would be busy comforting Stacy, fuming about how I mess up with her ecosystem. No peer pressure, Sam. Just clean drinks and hopefully some casual talk with Brian. What could possibly go wrong? What indeed? Like staring into closed eyes. I can never know if B knew I was looking at him. Did he even know I was there? Maybe he knew, but simply didn't care. The only thing looking back is my decaying sanity. I want to look away so much, but what's the point when the stench is still there? Started to think the only way to get B's attention was to throw myself off Colton Hill. How did I come so low? 
All I wanted was a chance to show how I feel about B without any noise getting in the way. No matter what happens next, it would at least give me some sort of closure and peace. Brian was super likable. Everyone liked everything about him. They couldn't stop smiling when Brian started talking. They made me want to puke. They smile as if their relationships with Brian meant anything, meant anything. And yet I was only left with a broken heart when he left Rosen Peak. He was so determined about leaving that being a star player wasn't enough for him. B needs to be a fucking model student. Nothing says pick me to college admissions like a spotless student record. Can't just shake up my whole world and leave. Hey. Get out of my drawers. Get out of my drawers. What's this? Suicide suspected in death of missing teenager. The girl of 17 who was found dead at Colton Hill likely ended her own life, police say. Sam Holt, a transfer student of Wayride Academy, had been reported missing for six days until Rosen Peak authorities discovered her body in the forest. Due to days of heavy rain around the time of her death, the investigation of Miss Holt's death faced a, new ch a few challenges. However, interviews with school faculty members and its students led to the possibility she threw herself off, off of Colton Hill after months of rejection from her peers. She's rarely seen with others, says the former teachers. She was even publicly humiliated just before her disappearance and must have worked as the tipping point for her. Rosen Peak police say the fall did not did not kill Sam instantly. It is possible, she guessed, for air through her broken neck before dying. Wayright Academy now faces suspicions of neglecting its students, led by the mother of Miss Holt. Okay. Hmm. Sam. Meet me at Colton Hill, you know where to find me, Brian. Uh, where do I... Oh. Yeah. I get it. But... Can I... Can I drop it? Where do I put this? Oh, it goes up here. Okay, so we must be getting close. October 7th, 2006. Oh man, everything's gone wrong. All my senses are screaming in pain. I don't even remember drinking any booze. The pain only escalated the moment Brian texted me. You feeling okay? No, I was not okay. And why is Brian asking me this? Did I do something to him? According to Brian, I went from being quite quiet to crazy happy and cute. His words, not mine. Real quick. I was so close to being the center of the party that he had to bring me back to the dorm. Why can't I remember any of them? Congrats, Sam. You've reached a new low in life. Shit, is this it? Is this how I die? I sincerely asked Brian if there was a good place to kill myself. He said, maybe now is a good time to show you my secret hideout. So I passed the test by showing the whole school a different me. Is he seriously going to take me to his Colton Hill hideout? Tomorrow I'm going to going to the so-called most romantic place in Rosen Peak with Brian. Something in my head that's keeping me awake, and it's not hangover. Is he going to kill her? He might kill her. Fucking... What? What? Is that my bathroom or just a bathroom? Alright, whatever. Oh. Um, hello. Guess we're back here again. So there she is. Sam. Just throw her off. Is the stick back? No. But that does look like where she went over. Oh. Hello. Alright. Moving on. Actually, you know what? I'm going to take a pause here. We'll continue in the next episode. Thanks for watching.